What's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Johnny. Today, we're going to be walking you through an outdoor interview that we're shooting. We're going to show you how to light properly, how to record audio, how to do it on a two camera setup and all sorts of stuff like that. So let's get to it. Should have left five minutes ago. <laughs> Smart tactic whenever you're moving C stands and you're not you're not in, like in a big old vehicle, putting sandbags on top of them during transport is a good way to keep them in place. Nowhere to put it. I think it's time to get a reverb van. Bro, is that a kid? Uh, oh no, it's not lady. Johnny, where the hell are we? The only ones here? No way. There's no way we're the first ones here. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Hey, are you here? I'm like probably two minutes. I'm like about to turn on that road. Oh god. Yeah, we're like the first ones here, so I'm not really sure where to park or where to go. What's up guys? It's now a couple days after the shoot. Uh, I'm gonna be breaking down the lighting setup, the audio setup, camera setup. After the fact, it was a little hectic during the shoot. We didn't really get too much time to uh, shoot a lot of BTS stuff or be able to like talk about all the breakdown stuff. So I'm gonna go through and kind of walk you guys through the various components of this um, interview setup. This is a two camera setup. Originally we were gonna shoot it um, outdoors in the client's backyard, but it started to rain. It was kind of like a drizzle, but it was just pretty unpredictable. It was kind of off and on. So we had to change plans and uh, we came up with a compromise. We were thinking about shooting inside, but we actually ended up um, still shooting outside, but under the, uh, under the client's patio, there's a big cover. We were able to get out of the rain, but still at the same time be outside and, and shoot outside. So that's that's what we ended up doing. So to start off, we have the uh, key light. So we have an Aperture 300D Mark II with a uh, light dome two on a, I think 11.6 foot combo stand, Matthews combo stand. So we actually rented two combo stands. Originally when we were gonna shoot outside, we were planning on doing a six foot by six foot scrim uh, directly over the client. And so we wanted really heavy combo stands that we could sandbag the hell out of just to make sure that there wasn't, it wasn't gonna turn into a sale or anything like that. So we had these combo stands. We didn't wanna go, we didn't want them to go to waste. And so we just basically ended up using them for stuff that you know, a C stand could work fine. Um, even one of our Manfrotto stands could work, but you know, we had them, so why not use them? So we have the 300D on a combo stand, and that is frame left of the interview subject. So if we were able to do it again, definitely wouldn't use the light dome. It was just cutting out too much light. Instead, I think we would use just one of these aperture reflectors, um, and then either point it directly at um, the interview subject, or if we needed to, uh, maybe put up like a 40 by 40 silk or something just to cut out, just to soften the light a little bit. Or alternatively, if we had a 600D, um, the light dome would probably do just fine. But because we were outside and it was pretty bright out, um, the 300D didn't do a whole lot. It kind of just gave it a little bit of key light. So next up, um, we have a Winston. We're filming a damn video, bro. <laughs> Patrick, can you call Winston? Winston. And try and like pet him or something. Hey. When you go over there. <gasps> okay. So next up, going over to the other side of the key light, um, we have a 40 inch by 40 inch uh, frame. And so basically this is just taking some of the sunlight and casting it as sort of like a fill light. <laughs> God damn it, Winston. Do you need to go potty? All right. I can't imagine you pissed like 10 times. So next up, moving over from the key light, we have a 40 inch by 40 inch frame with a silver uh, bounce on it. 
Um, it was pretty overcast that day, and so basically we just used this to bounce some of that overcast sunlight um, onto the subject's face. For this look, we kind of, just because it was so overcast out, we, we sort of went for a pretty balanced and flat look across his face. So there's not really one like dominant side of light on his face necessarily. So behind the subject, we have a floppy that is cutting out a lot of that overcast sunlight that's coming on. Um, it's basically just preventing that from hitting too much of his head, being too harsh. It's still giving a little bit of kind of like a kicker light, but again, kind of trying to keep everything relatively balanced. So next up, we move to audio. Uh, we had two different sources of audio for this. We had one shotgun mic and one lav. We just like that redundancy. We almost always go with the shotgun mic, but um, the lav is nice because it's so close to the, the subject's um, mouth that if he moves out of range of the shotgun, then the audio is still picked up clean from, from the lav. So for the shotgun, we used a Rode NTG3B. It was inside of the Rode blimp. This is just cutting out really any possible wind noise. Um, it is pretty awesome. And the NTG3 is actually a great outdoor microphone as well. And we just have this on a KTEC boom pole. So this is an integrated XLR boom pole. So the XLR cable runs internal within the boom pole. Um, highly recommend one of these. They are uh, really, really convenient. The other source of audio is from a Sennheiser AVX lav. We use this for all of our interviews basically. Like I said before, it's basically just a redundancy. So next up is cameras. For this setup, we had a two cam setup. Uh, on A is the C300 Mark III, and then on B is the C70. So this is the first client shoot that we had the chance to test both of those cameras together. And honestly, we were all pretty surprised and impressed with how well the C70 did. Um, it held up great in terms of dynamic range and image quality um, and the file size. We shot everything at 1080, but the file size is, is pretty reasonable. Um, and yeah, so we were super impressed with the C70. So on the C300, we had a 50 mil 1.2 um, as an A and as a, kind of a, a wide, um, wide cam. The interview subject was looking directly at A cam, so we didn't want anything super tight on that. And then on the C70, we had the 100 millimeter macro 2.8. Um, I really like, on a 35 mil sensor, I really like the 50 mil and the 100 mil combo. If you're far enough back, the 50 mil is a really good kind of like wide lens. Um, I know 50 doesn't really seem that wide, but if you can pull back, it really kind of gives nice depth and compression um, and, and gives just a nice sort of more wide angle. And the 100 mil macro is great for a B cam to kind of get a much tighter shot of the face um, off to the side. So really good combo. That's kind of what we normally go with for a two cam setup. So yeah, that actually moves me on to my next point around monitors. Did you see that Atomos just came out with the Shinobi 7 inch that is HDMI and SDI? So we're getting one. It's gonna replace the that small HD as a director's monitor. So because we were working with an agency on this shoot and a lot of outside people, uh, we wanted to have director's monitors for both cameras. It's really nice to give clients and outside parties that view of the cameras um, relatively far away from the actual cameras so that they're not bugging the camera operators and not looking over their shoulders and potentially messing anything up or moving the cameras. So uh, for A cam, we had a Teradek uh, small HD combo, seven inch screen. And then for B cam, we had another small HD 702 uh, with just a direct line to HDMI to the C70. Super nice to have both feeds right next to each other so that we could monitor settings and everything else and make sure stuff was consistent across the board because this two cam setup, we're gonna be cutting back and forth quickly and stuff needs to look the same and consistent throughout the video. So that's about it. Now back to past Johnny. Great job, Dan. You need to cut? Cutting? The bucket was actually useful today. Look at this. That's yeah, it came in handy big time, huh? <laughs> so we just wrapped the shoot. Uh, it was a lot of adapting throughout the day. So originally we were gonna shoot outside into the sunlight, but it started to rain. And so we went inside thinking that we were gonna shoot in the house, but then we found a nice middle ground shooting on the deck, which was covered. And so that way we had some cover from the rain. We had some cover from the sun um, and we made it work. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did like it, feel free to drop a like, drop a sub, and until next time, peace. <laughs>